Hi, I'm David Smith, and this is In a Word. I love looking at the book of Revelation. It's, uh, it's just such a fascinating book. And, and every time I get to Revelation 21, especially verse 8, uh, there's such a contrast between those who walk with God and those who are faithful and holy versus the list of folks that you find in verse 8. And I'm reading from the King James, and John writes and says, But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And it's an interesting list. In fact, in the study of the Revelation, uh, looking at commentaries or the writings of men on that book, sometimes people will label that section the who's who in hell. It's, it is an interesting list for sure. And uh, clearly that list is representative. It's not saying these are the only people who will be there. He's saying these are the kinds of folks that will be there. He lists specifically some groups of people to give us a general sense of the kind of folks that will be there. But did you notice leading the list is a group John calls the fearful. Who are the fearful? What does the word fearful mean? Because I don't know anybody who looks at that list and says, yes, I would like to be in that list. I would want to be the fearful there, so I want to be lost. Nobody wants to be lost. In reality, nobody wants to be. So who are the fearful? What does that word mean? Well, looking at this, we know that the word fearful does not mean natural fear. John is not saying here that in Revelation 28, people are going to be lost because they're afraid of snakes in this life. That's not what he's saying. He's not talking about natural fear. He's not saying if you have a fear of heights, you're going to be lost. You're going to have your part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. That's the second death. You, you that are afraid of heights, that will be your end. No, no, no. It's not natural fear that he's talking about. So we can X that out. We can remove that by process of elimination. Fearful does not mean people who are naturally fearful. Uh, even Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of his betrayal and his arrest, he was afraid according to Hebrews chapter 5. So it's not natural fear. Neither is it reverence or what we would call godly fear. Certainly he's not saying that people that have adoration for God will be lost in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. So we can mark that out. So what other kind of fear is it? If it's not natural fear, if it's not godly fear, well, it's what the Bible identifies as cowardice. In fact, if you have a modern speech translation, something that's been translated within the last few decades, it's likely that you have the translation cowardly in your translation of Revelation 21 verse 8. And that's what the word here means. Literally, the word means someone who disavows himself as a friend of Christ and avows himself as a friend of the world. And you can clearly see that's why when John writes and says, the fearful shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, clearly a person who would choose not to be a friend of Jesus but to be a friend of the world would be lost. Let me give you some examples of this. In Mark 15, verse 12, beginning, Pilate has Jesus on trial and he goes back out to the people and listen to this. After his investigation, Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will you then that I shall do unto him who you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Now listen, Pilate says, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cry out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. Now Pilate knows that Jesus is innocent. But when his duty and obligation to set the innocent man free conflict with public opinion, watch what happens. Verse 15, And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. When his duty and obligation to do the right thing caused him to be in conflict with public opinion, this politician chose to do the wrong thing. That is cowardice. How about Galatians 2? You say, okay, well that's a, that's a public figure who's not really involved in the spiritual scheme of things. Well, now Galatians 2 is a different story. In Galatians 2, Paul says, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. Why, Paul? For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. That is, he was in fellowship with them. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, notice the word, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. What happened? Peter in his mind thought, all right, here's an elite group of Jews from Jerusalem, and when they come down and they see me fellowshipping Gentile Christians, when they see me fellowshipping my brothers in Christ who happen to be of Gentile 
you know, heritage, they're going to say something about me. And he chose to do the wrong thing. And by doing it, he disavowed himself as a friend of Christ on that occasion. That's cowardice. And we're saying, look, at some point in all of our lives, we all face the choice of whether we will be a friend of Jesus or not. But remember, the word fearful is in a list of the who's who in hell. How do you counteract that? Just remember that no matter what happens in this life, as long as you stand with God, He will always stand with you. That's reason enough to never be afraid in a cowardly sense of whatever men will say or whatever men will do. Fearful. That's a tragic word in the Scripture. But it's been our word for the day. It's been a necessary word to examine. I'm David Smith, and this is In a Word.